So uh, this is going to kind of be an update um, and a rehash of my 10 C's bag video. Um, you can see that one. Uh, I'll put a, let's see, try to orient myself, a card in the corner up over there and uh, give you guys a, a rundown of what I used back when we went to Desitoya the second time. Um, and then this has been some updating. I've got some new gear to add to this kit. And then uh, I've also added a, a kind of an expansion um, to the bag itself. So what we started off with was a spec up spray and tactical holds everything packed that I purchased about, this is, yeah, it's easily seven years ago now. Um, I purchased this because the uh, the three day pack that was issued um, to everybody going to Afghanistan at the time was, was garbage. It was just like a Jansport uh, uh, school backpack that was Coyote 10. So I was like, I was unimpressed. So I went and spent the 140 bucks at the time um, to, to buy this. This was, um, I, and you can still get it. I don't know how much it costs at this point, but, uh, um, I believe it's come down a little bit. The inside, um, 100% waterproof, uh, nothing's getting in pet because it's a separate layer. Um, additionally, there's a panel that you can purchase. Uh, one of the things that, that was, uh, I didn't like when I first bought it was the, how flimsy it was. Um, I would try to put it on and it would, uh, kind of, sit weird on my back, but I got uh, these uh, kind of internal frame sections. Totally changed the way this pack feels on your back and its ability to kind of manage a load. And that fits on both sides. All right, I also added on the outside uh, varying sized old school um, M16 magazine pouches. I believe this is a three mag and this is a six mag. So I did that one on either side. So I could easily scale this down some more if I wanted to. Just a couple of days ago, I got the Voodoo Tactical Expanded uh, Deployment Bag. Um, I saw this, this is a, an interesting little addition because I can attach it via molly straps to the bottom of the pack, stays on nice and securely, or I can pop it off um, and carry this by itself. What I plan to actually attach this to is a uh, Condora uh, outdoor battle belt. And uh, so that'll give me some padding around the waist and I can carry this and add some more tools to the Molly that's uh, uh, on that battle belt. Um, that makes it so that I don't have to carry the whole 10 C setup. I can easily fit five C's into this bag and uh, be able to go out on short scouts or uh, um, uh, if I needed to just grab one piece, it, I would still be, you know, have peace of mind with all that. Uh, everything you see here, I pulled out of that bag, um, except for this, but there was still enough space. This is my Winter Outfitters um, hammock. Um, this was on sale a while back. I have not talked about this yet because I haven't deployed it yet, but Memorial Day weekend is coming up. We're going to go out and deploy this. Additionally, um, for the purposes of like simplifying my, my kit as far as sleeping goes, I got the Snug Pack Hammock Cocoon. Um, so this is essentially a sleeping bag that goes on the outside of a hammock uh, to make sure that all of your um, insulation is not compressed while you sleeping on it, uh, thus the kind of defeating the purpose, if that makes sense. Uh, so I'll be using that to sleep while we're out there. Uh, I bring a, uh, I believe this is a, a, an 8x10 tarp. Um, I haven't used this one in a while, but uh, it's a smaller one to, to fit in this particular bag. I'll often carry a uh, uh, 20 by 30 tarp in the vehicle to uh, expand my ability to get shade and cover because um, we really don't go anywhere uh, in this state without a vehicle. So we'll have that available. Um, got some Harbor Freight stakes. Um, the plastic stakes that come with most tents and, and that type of thing just don't hold up to the ground around here. Um, so when you go to hammer them, uh, they're just kind of done for after one use. So going with metal ones, you can straighten them out. You can do whatever you need to, uh, to keep them in service. And, uh, these were 95 cents. So, um, it's, it's a consumable item that's, that's easily, um, uh, deployed out where we live. Uh, this is my large blade knife, uh, or large blade option. It's this Condor Solo Bolo. Um, I used this on the Wilderness Survival Challenge. Um, with varying degrees of success. Uh, 
the blade profile and things like that, a couple of different things about it uh, weren't uh, ideal for that situation. So um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use this as a one tool option um, unless Condor decides to make some changes to it. Uh, but what they actually did, which makes me aggravated, is they partnered with the guy from the latest few seasons of Dual Survival, um, and he designed the uh, primitive sequoia knife. I want it really bad, but I don't know if I can justify another $100 when I doubt I'll need to use a big ass knife like this as often as, as to justify that expense. It's a sweet knife though, so check that one out. Um, I've wrapped a whole about, this is about 100 feet of uh, paracord around the sheath. Um, just because it was loose, I wanted to, to put it together, but uh, that helped out. Recently, I also picked up, so this would probably be my belt knife most of the time. This is the Real Steel Bushcraft, the D2 tool steel knife. These are super um, economical when it comes to the cost. 50 bucks for D2 is amazing. Um, and this has all of your standard bushcraft features. It's got the Scandinavian grind. It's a almost, it's a little over an eighth of an inch thick. Um, it's got a good, good 90 degree spine. The jimping works pretty well to uh, maintain control, but also is a great fire starter uh, striker on a ferro rod. And um, it's also got, um, it's, you know, good styling. It's a, it's a cool looking knife. So um, the sheath is Kydex, got some really solid lock up in there has the ability to go to run scout carry like this, or you can run vertically. Um, it's got all of the, the, the parts necessary to it to adjust um, to however you want to use it. Um, so far the use has, uh, hasn't been extensive with this, but uh, I really like it so far. So the can in the 10 C's there's the candle option, which uh, the modern 10 C would be a, a headlamp or a, uh, a flashlight. So I do both uh, just because I'm big enough, I should be, um, I like redundancy. Um, also, just the small extra knife is always helpful. This one's got a low profile. It's a Kershaw Cryo and uh, has done great things. This is a great EDC knife as well. Um, I, I packed many extra cutting tools in this bag, uh, sacrificing a whole lot of other things. Um, not, not sacrificing much except for my body to carry it around. <laughs> um, if you've seen our neck knife video, this is the uh, original option that I had, it's the Cold Steel Mini Tac Tanto. Um, I also replaced the ferro rod that I lost before we did that video. It's a, one of the small Coglins ferro rods, five bucks at uh, any of your local shops. Fits nicely in there, I added the, uh, the sheath for that. Um, within 10 C's we also got the compass, so I, I pack a full on lens added compass. The one thing about Nevada is you can probably get anywhere in this state dead reckoning and you'll probably be able to make it north to south, east to west, and, and uh, if you know how to read a map uh, and do terrain orientation, you're going to be solid. Um, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. If you get lost, rethink your life. Um, the uh, more elders. Pretty sure a lot of people have seen the, the video for this. Great little knife for crafting and things like that. It's also a fantastic fire rod starter, or fire rod striker. Um, having a few calories with you, cliff bars, and can't go wrong with brownies. Um, we just recently talked about the Spetsnaz shovel from Cold Steel. It's not technically the Spetsnaz shovel, it's the Special Forces. Um, but uh, this is probably gonna be one of the larger chopping tools I use, as well as the ability to dig. Uh, I've had this multi-tool for a really long time. It's a Gerber Freehand. This is a stainless steel uh, multi-tool, really beefy. It's, this is heavy as hell, but uh, it's got large pliers, got um, wire cutters, it's got, uh, and then the freehand option where you can deploy one-handed is, is really convenient. All of the tools are also accessible from the outside. So I've got a straight blade, got a large, technically screwdriver and ruler. Uh, I don't use that as much, but it's a, uh, the ruler, but uh, it's a great screwdriver. Um, we also have scissors, um, which are made out of some pretty hefty steel. I'm pretty sure these are actually not the same stainless steel as the rest of the body, but those are really helpful. The lockup is really nice as well. And then uh, they unlock easily. I would have had one more tool on this, but I made the mistake of loaning this to somebody and my serrated edge slash saw uh, broke off. And so uh, I can't remember who to blame for that, but 
they'll get their comeuppance. But, yeah, and then your standard small tools. Um, there's a can opener on there and things like that. Uh, small, one small fire kit has a few options for forest starting fires. I've got jute, I've got uh, a big lighter, I've got uh, char cloth. This is a Fresnel lens, some dryer lens. Additionally, I've got in this Pelican case, this is some of, if you've ever seen the video from my other channel, um, my pine tar and sawdust uh, kind of anytime fire starter. Uh, I've got some more dryer lint. I've got some um, steel wool, a couple more lighters and some char cloth and inside a waterproof case. This used to be for my iPod, um, but then Apple completely changed the dimensions of all of their stuff. So nothing fits in here anymore, uh, except fire starting, starting gear. So thanks Apple. Um, <clears throat> so for more container options, um, this was what I used to boil water on the wilderness survival challenge as well. It did a great job, uh, but it was a little low on capacity. So nest in there, the, the Stanley, um, cook cup. This comes with a couple of, more, uh, a couple more plastic cups inside. I ditched those, didn't really need them. Um, but this, uh, I stole the idea directly from uh, MK Ultra because it did such a good job for him while we're out doing that. So now I have both and they fit nicely together. This is my custom ferro or my ferro rod in its custom case that I made out of some, some oak dowel rod. Uh, this thing's great. She shoots a lot of sparks. I have used it quite a bit. If you can see how I've shaved off a lot of sparks from there. You can never have too many big lighters, just ask Les Stroud. Les Stroud. Uh, cotton, so standard she mug. And then I've got this from Millspec Monkey. It's a kind of a baklava plus a face covering. I could use it to filter water or whatnot if I wanted to. Um, a project that we got coming up is uh, MK Ultra and I are going to try to pit or fit a survival kit into something about this size, something that we can like attach to a sheath and then have most of our survival needs met for any short period of time um, right there on our belt. Um, I picked this because uh, it's not a boilable container, but it is a container, but it's also openable. So it could, it could hold everything that I need to bring with me. I'm pretty sure I could fit survival blanket. I just pulled another Coggins fire starter and striker in there. Um, we could probably get uh, some iodine tablets. I could get you know, lots of things in there and to, to cover most of the needs for getting a fire started and getting some cover above your heads. Along with a knife, you should be good to go out in the field. Uh, I've got another tarp with, um, this one has the reflective backing from, from a survival blanket. So this meets kind of both of those needs. It's much smaller, it's only a six by eight. So uh, now this one fits into the the Voodoo Tactical uh, Five C kit because it keeps it keep it uh, folds down mu much nicer and then it has those that two dual capability. Uh, last container, so I've got two stainless steel containers, one to commemorate my or uh, commemorate my alma mater, and then I have the clean canteen with the growler top. Um, I like this one a lot because. Uh, I don't lose the cap, number one, it's always attached. This grommet comes off no problem. So I could throw this, I could hook it on something and throw it right over the fire and boil my water right in it. Um, so I paid the extra 40 bucks uh, to buy this so that I had all those features all at the same time. Um, if you got a kit from, from uh, the Pathfinder School or somebody who has put a lot of thought into this, then you're gonna be good to go and, and you'll have something similar to that. Uh, so that's the whole kit. We're going to get it. Uh, this, this bag alone weighs 7.6 pounds. When we get it all back in the bag, we'll let you know how much it weighs. So I got to add that to it. It's already, it's already filming. It's already filming. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bro. All right. So there it is. That's the 10 seat bag as as outfitted with everything that was on this table. Um, so it's good to go. It has, I've got chopping tools, big knives, small knives. Uh, I've got cover, I've even got food, I've got water. Um, weighed in at about 30 pounds full once we got everything in there. 
Uh, I'm going to be adding the battle belt also in some type of attachment points so that I can, you know, add a waist belt to this. It's not an uncomfortable pack to carry around. Uh, right now it's, it's incredibly comfortable. And then if I were to pull just this pack off the bottom, um, I'm reducing my weight probably down to uh, 24 to 20 pounds. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of weight in that bottom one. There's a lot of uh, tools, so it can easily reduce it a little bit more. Um, so I'm pleased with this system as I've got it set up, and uh, I'm going to use it uh, next weekend. So stand by for more videos on all of this stuff. Uh, stand by for uh, MK Ultra the return anytime soon. You know, OPSEC and all that. He can't tell us when work he's coming back. It could be right there. He's not. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so thanks for. Joining us, uh, like, share, and subscribe, Facebook, uh, uh, or check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and, and Twitter, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.